Hey guys, it's the day after a big cook. I'm out here and I need to clean my pit. Uh, all that chicken fat, and grease and oil and nastiness has gone down to the bottom of my pit. So it's time to do something about it. Uh, I've already got the, the grates pulled out here. You can see we get a lot of ash carry over down here from the firebox. So I'm gonna clean all that out. <clears throat> All right, time to get to it. Hans, the Flammerwaffen. are clean but I need to pull them out so I've got to wait for it to cool down and I'm gonna run to the store and get some uh, cooking oil so after I'm done cleaning all this stuff then I can uh, oil my racks and the inside of my pit and uh, season it again all right see you in a minute as you can see it's dark out here now because some de someone decided to tell me at the last minute that they needed to go to the store that I had to wait wait so it's not time now but the good news is everything's out got it all nice and clean inside anybody that smokes a lot knows that it's pretty clean for a, a working horse now I did notice when I uh, I'm sorry about that guys when I cleaned my firebox starting to get surface corrosion so that tells me I need to be uh, seasoning my firebox a little bit better. So I'll be working on that, but it's a little bit late. So I'm gonna coat the inside of this thing on oil with uh, cooking oil, just so nothing blooms up overnight. And then I'll wash my grates and diverter plates and everything and tomorrow and get it all put back in. Uh, I did see some areas that I, that I need to paint, so especially in this channel water sits in there when it rains <clears throat> and around the lip right here <clears throat> so i'll try not to get oil on any of that but, uh, i'll see you guys in the morning i'm gonna have a nice refreshing adult beverage see you guys later All right, between the fire and the Citrus Safe uh, degreaser, you saw all that stuff just came up right off. It probably took me to about 10 minutes, maybe less, to clean all the grates, diverter plates, everything. So now we're gonna reinstall it and coat it all with the oil. See you in a minute.
Alright, so uh, that took me all of about 10 minutes to oil those things up and get them back in and get it all ready to go. I threw in uh, four logs into the firebox uh, with some charcoal. I'm getting ready to light that up and then I'll throw another log on top and I know my pit so that'll take it up to almost 400 degrees, about 375, 380. And I'll, it'll hold there for well over an hour so that it's going to season the inside of that pit really, really well. So let's do that. I just closed this thing up. That's a lot of cooking oil and everything uh, burning off and all that stuff. But I'm keeping my doors open at the moment. It's going to take a minute for that fire to realize this door is shut and then it's going to start coming over here towards the diverter plates like it should. See, the smoke's already starting to come out this way. So we'll give that a few more minutes and then we'll close up the main chamber. All right, it's done exactly like I said it would because I know my pit. So the heat's moving this way now, but it's just coming up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my main chamber. You see all this oil splatter and everything from spraying, but I'll get to that later on. So, and at this point, I can go ahead and close my upright. And I've got these wide open. got the vents back here wide open just so it we have that draw that's going to come up see it's already started coming out like it should be so it's a good day so right now all that oil and everything is kind of seasoning up just like a cast iron skillet kind of like what you guys did when you first got your pits and everything like that so I'm letting it run, run its course and then I'll probably drop my probe in there here in a little bit just to uh, make sure the temperatures, but I want to get all this nastiness kind of gone through. So once it goes clear, I'll drop my probe in there. All in all, uh, let's see, burning out took about 20 minutes and then about an hour or so cool down, cleaning the grates after that. It's about another 10 minutes 
oiling them up about another 10 minutes. This is the longest part right here is seizing. So there's no excuse that you, you guys that run barbecue businesses, there's no reason why you should have stalactites of creosote in your barbecue pits. And you know who you are because I've been to your fucking restaurants. Uh, you got fucking tin foil keeping creosote from dropping on your uh, food. It's not flavor. It's fucking poison. Clean your shit. Uh, my 500 gallon, when we were running that thing hot and heavy, I cleaned it every week so that shit wouldn't get on my food. But here at the house, it's about the same. I'm running a smaller pit, but I get the same amount of creosote. And when I was cleaning my 500, it would take about the same amount of time. So, uh, tomorrow after this thing cools down, uh, I'll do the external stuff, which will be included on this video. And then we'll wrap it up. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. So, see you guys in the morning. <sighs> oh, I have... Oh, sorry, that's fake. Uh, I just wanted to show you it's all clear over here. I tell you what. Wah, you can cook a steak on that. Just the heat off this firebox right here. Man, if somebody uh, built me a, a little stainless steel plate and everything to go in there. Uh, <coughs> Adam. Uh, yeah, beyond. Uh, all right, guys, I'll see you in the morning. All right, everything's all nice and seasoned. and I like that nice little black color that's all over everything except my water pan but I'm not too worried about that so now we're gonna do the exterior of the pit all right so you guys see we got some oil splatter there some oil and stuff there and all over this and a little bit over here so what I'm gonna do I'm going to wipe it down with this here mineral spirits and that'll take all that oil off there and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to touch it up with this stuff. This is good stuff. If you can find it, get it. I buy mine from Amazon so and I buy it by the case because I use it a lot. So let me set up the tripod here and then uh get rocking well the tripod didn't want to work out so I'm just waiting for this to dry until beverage time if you can't tell I've been doing this over the course of several days a couple minutes each day and I didn't have any cook so just chilling cleaning the pit so, it is what it is we'll get to paint here in a second and there we go. I'm not going to tell you how to paint, but got all the rust covered, everything like that. She looks as good as new. And uh, reminds me of a funny story. Uh, when I was a commercial diver, we'd get these red hat tenders. I don't know where they got them from. And, uh, They'd come out offshore with us and you know, you're always painting tools while you're offshore. And I used to give them the, the rattle cans, right? To paint tools. I used to tell them that they have to shake the cans until it stops rattling because that little ball activates the paint. And we'd have these little red hat tenders running around on the deck of the ship, shaking them freaking cans, trying to get them balls to dissolve. But anyway, uh, Tomorrow I'll get the ash out of out of the firebox, and then uh, I'm pretty much done until my next cut. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something, something that made your your job a little bit easier. I hope uh, if you liked the video, give me a like down in the comments and uh, leave a message. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Y'all have a great day.